Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm starting a brand new retrospective on Sons of Anarchy with the review of Season 1. So I've decided to discuss this show on my channel since the spin-off Mayans MC is currently airing its final season. By the time that series ends, my retrospective on the entire Sons of Anarchy franchise should be completed by then. Just a quick history lesson before we actually start the review. Sons of Anarchy is a neo-western crime drama that follows the lives of a tight-knit outlaw motorcycle club known as the Sons of Anarchy. The club operates in the fictional town of Charming, which is set in California. It ran for seven seasons from 2008 till 2014. It was created by Kurt Sutter, who some of you may recognize as a writer for another iconic TV show known as The Shield. It was produced by the cable network FX was based on the Shakespearean play Hamlet and is often hailed as one of the all-time greats in TV history. And after watching the show in its entirety, I couldn't agree more. It's easily one of my favorite TV shows of all time, and I have a close friend of mine to thank for recommending it to me two years ago, and he's glad I enjoyed it as much as he did. Now as for the first season, I think it's a perfect start to the show, and it's easily one of my favorites. So let's get into it. So first of all, I really liked the format for this season. Since this is the beginning of the show, you can tell that it's still finding its feet and doesn't have everything mapped out yet. The majority of the time, that kind of hurts a debut season because maybe it hasn't fully forged its identity yet. But with the first season, it surprisingly worked because it utilizes somewhat of an episodic structure with self-contained stories while still having a few small overarching plot lines that are mostly just setups for the show going forward. But this is a great way to help you engage with the characters and to allow everything about the show, the world, the style and the tone to marinate before we get into the major storylines and what have you. And it's very tightly paced with most episodes being just over 40 minutes each, especially compared to the later seasons. I really appreciate the style of the show as well. You know, aside from having a new western aesthetic to it, kind of like Breaking Bad, it also has a strong emphasis on realism. Since there's pretty much no background music the majority of the time unless there's a song playing and there aren't any flashbacks of any kind. So yeah, if you like shows with these specific stylistic elements, then Sons of Anarchy is the show for you. This show also has some of the best action put to TV, whether it be the bike chases, or the car chases, not to mention the gunfights, and even the hand-to-hand -hand combat sequences are cool. The show's many themes include love, brotherhood, loyalty, betrayal, redemption, vigilantism, corruption, racism, and stuff like that. Now there's quite a few characters on this show, so I'm not going to delve into all of them because otherwise we'll be here all day. So instead, I'm just going to go over the most important ones and leave the rest up to you upon viewing the show. The main protagonist is Jax Teller, played by Charlie Hunnett. Jax is the vice president of Sam Crow, the Sons of Anarchy's motorcycle club. He is estranged from his wife Wendy due to her meth addiction for the sake of their son Abel who is born premature. He also discovers a manuscript written by his late father John Teller and the longer he sticks around the more he begins to question his loyalty to the club. I found his character arc to be well written all throughout the show and let's be real no one other than Charlie Hunnam could have perfected this role. Then we have Gemma Talamoro, played by Katie Segal. Gemma is the mother of Jax and wife to the club's president, Clay Morrow, and she is very unapologetic about the lengths she goes to to protect the club and her family. Clay Morrow, the club's president, is played by Ron Pullman, who everybody knows as the original Hellboy from the Guillermo del Toro movies. Many of his decisions for the club put him at odds with several members, resulting in an allegiance that wavers all throughout the show. Then you have Tara Knowles, a pediatric resident at the St. Thomas Hospital. Tara and Jax have history of their own, but their relationship in the season is solely based on their mutual concern for Jax's son Abel. The many members of Sam Crow are also quite memorable in their own special ways. 
For example, there's OP, played by Ryan Hurst, who you might recognize as Beta from The Walking Dead. Not only is he a member of the club, but his father, Piney Winston, was one of the co-founders of the club. The thing about OP is his struggles in balancing his loyalty to the club and his commitments to his wife Donna and their two children, making him relatable to pretty much every hardworking man out there in the world. Chubbs, who's Scottish, is a former member of the club's Belfast charter, known as Sam Bell, and out of all of the ranks and positions in the club, he is said to have had the most. And he also has a father-like relationship with some of the characters. Then you have Tig, who's played by Kim Coates. Tig is the club's sergeant at arms and their most violent member. He's also eccentric and quirky in some ways due to his fear of dolls or pedophobia, and he's also a necrophiliac. I think that pretty much says it all. Bobby is the club's treasury secretary. He's intelligent and even tempered, but isn't one to resort to violence. And whenever the club has fundraisers or anything like that, he always turns up as an Elvis impersonator. And he does a pretty good job if you ask me. The club has a prospect called Half Sack, played by Johnny Lewis, may he rest in peace. Juice is the club's hacker and intelligence officer. And Happy is the club's assassin, played by David Labrava, who in real life was an actual member of Hal's Angels, a real life motorcycle club. Sam Crow has a rival in the form of the Mayans MC, and their leader is Marcus Alvarez. And let's not forget Charming's law enforcement, the most obvious of which is police chief Wayne Anser, played by Dayton Kelly, who you might recognize as Jeremiah Otto from Fear the Walking Dead. Despite being a cop, he isn't afraid to resort to Sam Crow for protection when needed, especially since he owns a truck company of his own. He's easily one of the best characters in the show, and I guess it's because as the show progresses, he comes off as that one uncle in your family that you can always talk to at family gatherings. You know, you can share secrets, you can share stories and just have a laugh. I'm sure you can all relate to that in some way. So yeah, Unce is one of the best characters. There's David Hale, Wayne's deputy, who's played by Taylor Sheridan, who you might know as a writer on several films and TV shows such as Sicario, Hallow High Water, and Yellowstone. And of course, Agent June Stoll, an ATF agent who is investigating Sam Crow's involvement in arms trafficking. And there's a few miscellaneous characters worth mentioning as well. For example, Otto, who's actually played by the show's creator, Kurt Sutter. He's a former Sam Crow member who's currently serving time for second degree murder. There's Ernest Darby, played by Mitch Pileggi, who everybody knows as Walter Skinner from The X-Files, and Samuel Campbell from Supernatural. Ernest is a member of a white supremacist gang called the Nordics. There's Chucky, a bookkeeper for the Triads who suffers from one of the weirdest disorders I have ever seen. And there's also a homeless woman who randomly pops up here and there throughout the show. She's kind of a mystery character, but her significance becomes clear at the very end. So keep an eye out for her while watching. And so, yeah, as far as characters are concerned, I think I'm just gonna leave it at that. That's more than enough. And the only other thing to talk about is the finale. It does a good job in laying the groundwork for season two, especially since this season is mostly comprised of setups and establishments for what the show revolves around. And yeah, that's pretty much the review. This is a perfect debut season, one of the absolute best in TV history. Next time, I'm gonna review season two, so look forward to that soon. Thank you all for watching, guys. Please be sure to like the video, share it, and subscribe. Ring the bell, take care, and I'll see you soon.